In your job, you may be exposed to blood or other potentially infectious material, such as bodily fluids, tissues, and cells. Bloodborne pathogens are microorganisms that cause disease and can persist in the human body. Examples of bloodborne pathogens include human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, hepatitis B virus, or hepatitis C virus. There are steps you can take to help prevent exposure and to keep you safe at work. To protect yourself from injury and illness, it is important to recognize bloodborne diseases and symptoms, identify tasks that lead to exposure, implement universal precautions, and follow emergency procedures. The Bloodborne Pathogen Standard is a state and federal law that protects employees with reasonably anticipated occupational exposure to human blood and other potentially infectious materials. The standard applies to all workers, including custodial staff, emergency responders, physicians and nurses, athletic trainers, laboratory personnel, child care staff, and bio-waste workers who may come into contact with blood while performing their typical work duties. Locate a copy of the standard online from the Cal OSHA website. Three prevalent pathogens that can be transmitted by exposure to infected blood and other potentially infectious materials are hepatitis B and C viruses and human immunodeficiency virus. Due to the potential consequences of these pathogens, it is important to recognize the symptoms of the diseases they are associated with and how they can be transmitted. HIV attacks the cells in your immune system that fight infection. Symptoms may include swollen lymph nodes, fatigue, weight loss, diarrhea, persistent dry cough, low-grade fever, flu-like symptoms, or no symptoms at all. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C are diseases that attack the liver. Symptoms of hepatitis B may include jaundice, fatigue, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, fever, dark urine, and pale stools. Currently, there is no cure, but it can be prevented by the hepatitis B vaccine. Most people who become infected with hepatitis C do not experience symptoms despite chronic infection. However, hepatitis C infections can produce symptoms similar to hepatitis B, but also including joint pain. Currently, there is no vaccine for hepatitis C, although treatment is available. Discuss with your supervisor any additional diseases known to be contained in the human blood, bodily fluids, tissues, or cells in your workplace. Access additional information on these diseases and other bloodborne pathogens covered by the standard from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or the California Department of Public Health. Bloodborne pathogens are transmitted through contact with infected human blood or other potentially infectious materials. They can be transmitted across broken skin, such as open sores, cuts, scratches, and abrasions. Bloodborne pathogens can also be transmitted across mucous membranes, like the lining of the nose, mouth, and eyes. Occupational exposure to bloodborne pathogens can occur as the result of a needle stick, a cut from a contaminated sharp object, a splash to the mucous membranes, or direct contact with broken or damaged skin. If you handle bloodborne pathogens, you are at risk of exposure. In addition to blood, other human body materials, such as tissues, saliva from dental procedures, and semen and vaginal secretions are considered potentially infectious. While they may contain infectious agents, urine, feces, vomit, tears, sweat, and nasal secretions are not considered a risk of bloodborne pathogens unless they visibly contain blood. Recognize biohazard warning labels. A label with the word biohazard and the biohazard symbol should be affixed to equipment and containers used with bloodborne pathogens or other potentially infectious materials. The labels are fluorescent orange or orange red with lettering and symbols in a contrasting color. Labels are required on containers of regulated waste, refrigerators and freezers containing blood and other potentially infectious materials, and other containers used to store, transport, or ship blood or other potentially infectious materials. Your workplace is required to have a written exposure control plan that says how it will eliminate or minimize exposure to bloodborne pathogens. The plan is designed to protect you and your coworkers from being exposed and to care for workers who have been exposed. Ask your supervisor where and how to access the exposure control plan for your department or campus. Review and provide suggestions for revising the plan with respect to the procedures you perform in your work area. Use universal precautions to protect yourself from bloodborne pathogen exposure. That is, handle all human bodily fluids, including blood, as if you know they are infectious. To prevent or reduce exposure to bloodborne pathogens and other potentially infectious materials, apply the following controls whenever possible. Use engineering controls or physical devices that isolate or remove the bloodborne pathogen hazards from your workplace. 
For example, use brooms and dustpans to collect and dispose of sharp items in a puncture-proof container. Use safety engineered sharps. Administrative and work practice controls are non-physical controls that reduce the possibility of exposure by changing how tasks are performed. For example, obtain appropriate training. Avoid eating, drinking, smoking, applying cosmetics, or handling contact lenses in areas where there is a reasonable likelihood of exposure. Do not store food or drink in areas where blood or other potentially infectious materials are present. And wash your hands. To properly wash your hands, wet your hands. Dispense soap. Lather by rubbing your hands together for at least 15 seconds. Be sure to lather the back of your hands, between your fingers, and under your nails. Scrub your nails against your palms, rinse with water, and dry using a clean towel or air dry. Turn off tap using a paper towel if possible. If soap and water are not available, you may use alcohol-based hand sanitizers that contain at least 60% alcohol. Hand sanitizers can quickly reduce the number of microorganisms, but will not eliminate all types of pathogens. Wear personal protective equipment, or PPE, as a barrier to further reduce bloodborne pathogens hazards. Examples of PPE include gloves, laboratory coats or body covering, safety glasses, face shields, and shoe coverings. When selecting PPE, consider the type of anticipated exposure, the durability and appropriateness of the PPE for the task, and the fit. Check for tears or holes in the PPE before and after putting them on. Remove gloves by rolling them inside out. Wash your hands after removing gloves. Do not wash and or reuse disposable gloves or other PPE. Verify with your supervisor information regarding the decontamination and disposal of contaminated materials, including locations, decontamination types and proper use, and waste removal and handling specific for your work area. Only clean up a spill if you have been trained and feel comfortable. For assistance in spill cleanup, contact Environmental Health and Safety. When cleaning up spills, wear full PPE, including gloves, closed toe shoes, safety glasses or face shields, body covering, and shoe covering as necessary. Alert others in the area that there's a biological spill. Check yourself for contamination. Assess the situation. Are you wearing the necessary PPE? Cover the spill and the area around the spill with absorbent material. Pour or spray freshly made disinfectant on absorbent material. Allow a 30 minute contact period. Please note the disinfectant and contact time may vary based on location and job function. Wipe down any contaminated stationary equipment or furniture with an appropriate disinfectant. Remove items and place in the appropriate waste container. Clean the area again with your disinfectant solution. Remove PPE and wash your hands. Inform everyone in the area that the cleanup is complete. Contact your supervisor or environmental health and safety to report the spill. Store biohazardous waste in red bags inside labeled and leak-resistant secondary containers. Store sharps in puncture and leak-proof containers. Processes for disposal may be different at your location. Refer to your exposure control plan for more information. If you have a reasonable chance of coming into contact with blood or blood-containing materials on your job, you can obtain the hepatitis B vaccination. Reference the EHNS website at your location or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for information on the hepatitis B vaccine's efficacy, safety, method of administration, and the benefits of being vaccinated. You can also consult your supervisor for more information. Vaccination is free to you and covered by the university. If you are offered the vaccine but do not want it, you must complete a vaccine declination form from your supervisor. An exposure incident means a specific eye, mouth, or other mucous membrane, non-intact skin, or other parenteral contact with potentially infectious materials, such as through the veins. If an exposure occurs, follow your campus's emergency procedure instructions. Notify your supervisor and EHMS. Follow your campus injury procedures whenever there is an exposure or injury. This may include completing an incident or injury report through the employer's first report system. Also, immediately notify EHNS of injuries related to bio-incidents. If you are stuck with a needle, get blood in your eyes, nose, mouth, or get blood on broken skin, immediately wash skin with soap and water or flush eyes with water for 15 minutes. Seek medical attention and notify your supervisor and environmental health and safety. 
If you are exposed, a medical evaluation will be conducted to determine the impact of the exposure and the best course of action for follow-up. This confidential medical evaluation will include documentation of the route of exposure and the circumstances under which the exposure incident occurred. The campus will engage in identification and documentation of the source of materials you are exposed to unless the campus establishes that identification is not feasible. If you consent, the medical provider will test your blood for hepatitis B virus and HIV. Finally, there may be post-exposure treatment if determined appropriate. Remember, there are steps you can take to protect you from injury or illness associated with bloodborne pathogens. Recognize bloodborne diseases and symptoms. Use universal precautions in situations with bloodborne pathogens. Properly dispose of pathogen waste. Use PPE, contaminated clothing, and sharp objects. Seek medical treatment and report all suspected exposures.